If you are looking for some core exercises that will help tone your core, strengthen your core, improve athletic performance, help reduce back pain, and are exercises that you can do anywhere, anytime, that require no weight and are really easy on your body, yet effective, then you've come to the right place. That's what I'm gonna show you in this video. I'm gonna give you five of the most effective exercises for working out your core. So follow along with me. I'm gonna walk you through how to do each one and you can do these at home as you watch. All right, so the first one is gonna be a basic plank exercise. Um, so you may not know what this is or you may be familiar with it, but a lot of people don't do it correctly. It's actually very easy to do a lazy plank and not get the work out of it that you should be. Um, so this is gonna work not only your core, but your shoulders and your glutes. So really important on this to remember to keep everything as tight as you can, stable as you can, and everything in proper form, which I will explain right now. So what you're gonna do is get into almost a push-up position on your mat, but instead of coming onto your hands, you're gonna come onto your forearms. So your forearms are gonna be where your elbows right underneath your shoulders, hands flat. Avoid bringing your hands in that's gonna uh, internally rotate your shoulders and be a cheat. So keep your hands straight like train tracks. Toes on the floor, and then you're gonna lift up till you're in a straight line. And what you wanna focus on is keeping the belly button drawn in as if someone had a string in your spine and they're pulling up attached to your belly button. You wanna pull that belly button up into your spine and hold this position with shoulders pulled away from your ears and glutes tight as long as you can. So you might wanna start this with 15 seconds. You might wanna start with 30 seconds. You might be strong enough where you can do it for two minutes. So this exercise can always be progressing with doing different things while you're in the plank or simply by holding it longer. If you find that holding a plank for even 15 seconds is really tough, then what you can do is start with an easier form. So rather than go onto your toes, when you're here, you're just gonna drop your knees down to the ground and you're gonna hold this position. Now what you wanna watch for, whether you're on your knees or on your toes, is that your back doesn't start to do this. Okay, so the most common thing when you're doing a plank and start to get tired or if you're actually lacking the strength, what I see the most often with clients is either they start here and then start to go like this, their back arches and the belly drops toward the ground, or butt goes up in the air. So if you're doing either of those, regress down to your knees and make sure you can hold that core tight without an arch in your back or a rounded back. Once you can do that for about a minute, then you can go to your toes. Okay, so as soon as you start to feel your back drop or butt lift, then you're pretty much done. So go ahead and stop. Consider that your time for the exercise. And then you can progress to it. So every couple days you can try it again, try and go a little bit longer. I mean, you can't even do this every day. So what you wanna probably start with is about 30 seconds and work your way up maybe 10 seconds every day. Again, if you need to start with less, it might just be 10 seconds, it might be 15 seconds. Wherever you're at, just start small and then incrementally build. Now the next exercise, very similar, all it is is gonna be a side plank. So rather than be on your forearms in a like a push-up position or a prone position where your whole body is facing the ground, you're gonna flip over to your side. Same thing, you're gonna have your elbow stacked right underneath your shoulder, body in a straight line, hips lifted off the ground. And again, I will give you a regression for this one as well. So this one, where the plank is gonna work a lot of your transverse, your low back, some of your glutes and your shoulders, this is really gonna focus in on the obliques. So here, you're gonna come onto your side this way, elbow underneath your shoulder, hand facing out, hand on your leg or hand on your hip, and then you're gonna lift all the way up into the air. I like to also lift one arm into the air or have clients do that. That often helps with not hunching forward. So you wanna make sure that your shoulders are not rounding forward, you're not doing this when you're in the plank. You want a straight line from shoulder to shoulder to elbow and hips lifted up in the air. Again, you wanna watch your hip, so keep the belly button pulled in and then you wanna watch your hip. If you start to sink, 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 then go ahead and stop. 
just give yourself some rest. So just hold this. As soon as you start to sink down towards the ground, then go ahead and take a break. Again, you can regress this one simply by bending your knees to 90 degrees and lifting up here. Hand on your hip or hand up in the air and just hold this again as long as you can. So similar to the plank, start with whatever you can, incrementally work your way up. If you need to start with your knees, start there and then work up to the full position when you feel ready and strong. Just make sure you're keeping your core and your glutes very tight and your body in one straight line. The next exercise you can think of a bit like a plank because again, you're gonna be in a prone position. This one is called a quadruped or you also see it referred to as a bird dog. So in this one, you're gonna start on all fours in a tabletop position. So knees are gonna be right underneath your hips, wrists are gonna be right underneath your shoulders and just like the plank, you wanna watch your stomach. So you're pulling your belly button in towards your spine, not letting it sink down towards the ground, not letting your butt go up in the air so you want a flat back, just like this. And then from here, all you're gonna do is extend one leg backwards and the opposite arm goes forward. Now, if, if this is too challenging because it can be tough for balance, then you can just do one or the other. You can just start by extending your leg and holding that. Or you can start by extending your arm and holding that. What we're focusing on is keeping that belly button in really tight, just like the plank. So the focus on squeezing that as if someone had a corset and is squeezing you in really tight, or if someone just hit you in the stomach and you're sucking in to protect yourself and brace yourself, you wanna think of bracing your core as you hold this position. So you can simply start with the extended opposite arm and leg and hold here, keeping the flat back and the core tight. Hold that for about 10 to 15 seconds and then switch. Or if you wanna advance it a little bit more, you can extend and then draw your knee and your elbow in towards each other, curving just a little bit, thinking of it kind of like a crunch. So you're using your abs to pull your knee and your elbow together and then extending all the way back out. What you wanna watch here is that when you extend, you don't kick your leg way up in the air. We're looking for a straight flat back, a tight glute without kicking up your leg. And then in, extend out, stretch, 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 and reach, and then contract, bring it together. So you can start with about five to 10 on each side. All right, switch sides, and then if you want to, you can repeat. All right, then this next exercise you can almost think about flipping that quadruped exercise upside down, and now you're gonna do something very similar but on your back. This is called a dead bug. So you can just think of it, it's just like if you saw a bug that flipped over and has died and is trying to uh, flip itself back over, just got stuck in that position. That's what this one mimics. Um, so this is really gonna work on that trunk core stability. Again, moving your arm and leg. So what you're gonna do is come down onto your back, Legs come up into the air, and just like the bird dog, you want your knees right over your hips, and then arms straight up in the air. Then what you're gonna do is extend one leg, drop your heel towards the ground, and bring it back in. Extend the other one, don't quite tap your heel on the ground, just extend, hover over the ground for a second, and lift. You wanna focus on keeping this core really tight so there shouldn't be a lot of movement, just a slight bit of space between your back and the ground, really drawing that belly button in towards the spine and thinking about using your core to extend your leg and then to draw it back in. So keep the belly button tucked in tight. And then if you wanna advance it, when you extend one leg, you can reach your opposite arm back and together avoiding a big arch in the spine. You wanna keep this very tight, very stable. Don't let anything move. So again, you can start with about five to 10 on each side and work your way up. This one seems incredibly simple, but if you're really focused and concentrated on keeping that core tight, it should feel pretty tiring by the end. 
And then the last one we're gonna do is gonna be a little bit more focused on the hips and the glutes, which they're not this part of the core. They're not think like abs and low back, but they are connected and they are an essential part of the core. So the top of the glutes is included here. So you do yeah. wanna make sure you're working your glutes too. That's gonna help alleviate back pain and help strengthen your entire core. Um, so that your glutes do the work that they're supposed to be doing and your core and back do the work that they're supposed to be doing. Otherwise one takes over the, for the other and that's where it ends up with a lot of back pain and weaknesses and muscle imbalances. So on this one again, we're gonna start on our back, feet on the ground. So feet should be about hip distance apart. Heels pretty much right underneath your knees. You're gonna go hands on the ground and all you're gonna do is lift your hips up into the air as high as you can and then come back down. So come up, squeeze your glutes and you want the weight in your heels. So focus on putting all the weight in your heels. No, no going on your toes and lifting up your heels. You should be able to lift your toes up off the floor and then come back down. So on this one, you can either come up and just hold it for maybe 10 to 20 seconds and then do a few sets of that or you can do repetitions of say 10 to 12 and then do a few sets of that as well. What you wanna pay attention to in this one is where you're feeling this work. So some people are gonna feel it more in their hamstrings, some more in their glutes, some more in their low back. You should feel it a bit in your core because it does require some core transverse muscles in order to lift you up there. And then ideally you wanna feel it the most in your glutes and a little bit of your lower back. So if you're feeling it all in your lower back or all in your hamstrings, and that probably means that your glutes are not firing, which is why this is such an important exercise. So keep repeating it, keep doing it, and focus on squeezing those butt muscles and feeling those work. And the more you do it, those will start to strengthen and you should feel less in some of the air other areas of your body. So there you have it. That is five of my favorite exercises to do. And again, these are great. I still do them all the time for triathlon, for just building core endurance, core strength. And I've been doing a lot of core exercises for a long time, but these are so much more effective than just trying to rep out a bunch of crunches. Um, so these are some of the most safest, most effective exercises that anyone can do. Um, and you can modify this in a very variety of ways, but these are a great base to start with and they should help to alleviate back pain, create better core strength, better stability, and increase your glute strength. So definitely incorporate these into your routine. Whether you're a very beginner or an advanced athlete, these are some excellent exercises that you can do anytime, anywhere, no equipment required. Um, can even do these if you're watching TV. So super simple, easy to incorporate into your daily life. So I would suggest either doing a few of these, maybe pick three and do them as part of your regular workout routine, or just pick one and stick with that for about a week and then take another one and work on that one. So bring these into your normal daily routine and you should definitely see some improvements in your core strength and endurance. If you have any questions about these or have any other exercises you'd like to recommend, please leave them in the comments below or you can contact me with questions as well. And I do provide online personal training services and nutrition coaching. So if you'd like more personalized services to learn how you can strengthen your core, your entire body, lose weight, build strength as an athlete, then I would love to help you. So contact me for completely custom personal training. You can find me at renewalfitcoach.com or you can email me at renewalfitcoach at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and share this video if it was helpful and I will see you in the next video.